does it matter if I'm righteous? Is the title of tonight's devotion. Two thoughts. Does righteousness pay? Verse 1 to 3. And God's perspective. Verse 4 to 8. Do you attach a string to your faith in God? Does your faith in God come with the condition of His blessing upon your life the way you would like it to go? If life goes contrary to what we would expect, would we just simply reject God and go our own way? Do we come to trust God solely because He is God, therefore we worship Him? Or will we obey Him and worship Him, however great the suffering that may come upon us? Do you put a price tag to your faith? Do you put a condition to your walk with God? Is our relationship with God conditional? Or do we worship Him because He alone is God? These are pertinent questions for our consideration so that we may not deny God however severe the suffering may come upon us. For Job, his suffering was very severe because he lost suddenly all that he had. He lost his wealth in a short moment of time and he lost his family, his children, ten of them, were at one time uh, lost to him. Uh, he could not explain why the sudden calamity. And he lost his health. Suddenly, boils were coming all over him so that he could not, as it were, carry on life normal but he had to live in pain and he had to live in a state of shock, perpetual pain and shock. What a life. When we close chapter 32, we saw Elihu counselling Job to confess, confess and forsake his sin, to stop demanding God to do what he wants. His suffering was great. Job has been talking as it were. Uh, William MacDonald said, well, ignorance, speaking evil, spewing forth rebellion, sin, and a multitude of words against God. And here, in chapter 35, Elihu reproves Job for claiming to act more righteously than God and for saying that righteousness does not pay. That man's sin does not harm the sovereign God, neither does his righteousness benefit God. You see, what's the point of becoming a Christian? when in this life we still have to suffer? What's the point of becoming a Christian? If in this life we are no different from any other ordinary man, we still go through life as it were, um, perhaps even worse. So what's the point of following God when life seem to be as miserable as a non-believer? What's the point? Have you heard someone, anyone speak to you in this way? Well, it's not uncommon. In fact, it is very common. Um, but we need to understand God 
and we, under, we need to understand the nature of life correctly, truly. We need to have a correct biblical perspective so that we would be able to claim the great salvation that God has wrought on our behalf for our soul's sake, for Job. His suffering was so severe, Christopher Ash uh, remarked with this question. If I take the trouble to live a pertinent and godly life, what is the point? If despite my virtue, I experience such terrible suffering, surely I might at least expect some measure of blessing instead of this dreadful pain. Ah, as you look at life, as you ponder concerning life and the things that happen to the people of God in this life, uh, well, uh, it behooves us to think carefully and consider the long and short of our faith. Huh. How true is this faith that you have, this belief that you have, is it something that would ultimately benefit you? Well, here the question Elihu uh, pointed out to Job. He says in verse 1, Elihu speak moreover and said, Think thou this to be right, that thou sayest, My righteousness is more than God's. For thou sayest, what advantage will it be unto thee, and what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? Well, this was what Job was uh, lamenting in the time of his suffering. And Job is going to speak to him in a very matter-of-fact way. Right? Um, as uh, Christopher Ash would put it, he would not put his arm around Job's shoulder. There's no sympathetic cup of tea, but rather a strong rebuke. Well, when a man is facing such great calamity, uh, what could be a response? Well, you see, God has allow this man Elihu to speak in order to teach and show Job certain spiritual uh, lessons that he might be able to learn in retrospect before God would uh, himself speak and God would finally Cause Job to be restored again after he has been fully tried by God and he fully understands the length and breadth of God's love in allowing him to suffer that affliction. Have you ever wondered uh, when suffering comes, why do we blame God that suffering comes in our life, that it has to be so difficult to bear? Well, um, with Job being silent now, Elihu is speaking and uh, giving very uh, pondering questions for Job to consider and for us to consider in our time of suffering and affliction. Matthew Henry said, well, for verse 1 to 8, he had represented religion or faith in God, as we would understand it, as an indifferent 
unprofitable thing. And so what's the point? Does righteousness pay? That's the thought that we want to think about. Suffering can cause a person to be shaken, to make light of eternal blessings and to wallow in present sufferings. 